germ and made you perfect? You don't remember how you began from dust? You don't remember that you were just a tiny life germ, a sperm, and you have evolved to be a perfect man? And now you disbelieve in the originator of what you are enjoying? Don't you realize he can return you to dust? He said, well, as for me, Allah is my Lord. Now look at his declaration of faith. He don't have nothing. He can't make ends meet. But he declares, Allah is my Lord. The Quran says, Allah straightens the means of subsistence for whom he pleases. And he amplifies it for whom he pleases. He can make you wealthy. It is easy for him. And he can straighten the means of subsistence for you where you can hardly make it from one day to another. It is easy for Allah to do this. But when he does this, how do we react? This faithful servant says, Allah is my Lord. And I'm not associating any with my Lord. I may be poor. But I'm not going to bow down to the loan shark and make him a god beside Allah simply because he says he can give me the money that I need but at an exorbitant, usurious rate. Yeah. Away with the loan shop. Right. Away with the dope dealer who will tell you maybe if you sell this, you can get that. Away with those who offer you money to sell your soul. Away with them, sisters, who offer you money to compromise virtue and principle. Away with them. You should say, like that man here, Allah is my Lord. He is the one who evolved me from a life germ in the womb of my mother. When no power was present and my mother did not know she was pregnant, yes, a powerful God said, be. And I evolved in the darkness of my mother's womb. She didn't form me. He formed me in the womb. Yes, and he brought me out at the appointed time. Yes, and it was he who put milk in my mother's breast for me. It was he who arranged the earth in this marvelous arrangement that I could go to the earth and nurture myself that I may evolve to a perfected man physically. So I'm going to put my trust in him that if he could do all that for me, I know that my rent will be paid. I'm not going to lay down and wait on a mystery God to come and drop down bread on me. I'm going to work but my rent will be paid. My mortgage will be paid. My condition will be better. How do you know? Because God will make it better if I'm in harmony with him and go to work. But what is this leading to? What is this talking about? Today, we look at black people they're like the man in the parable who has nothing. And the other man that we're arguing with is Reagan as a representative of a very rich and powerful nation of people. I'm more powerful. You do what I say. You know who I am. I'm the white man. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Nigger bow down. But he forgot where he came from. So his companion that's arguing with him say, hey, hey buddy, 
Do you disbelieve in Allah? Who created you from dust, then of a small life germ, and rose you to this great position of power? And now you flaunt your power in the earth as though you don't have a sovereign that you have to uh, pay respect and honor to? So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was raised up among us to remind the white man of the humility that he should have for he began as a dweller in a cave. I'm not saying this, my Caucasian listeners, to smack at you, but I'm only a reminder that as you were found in the caves of Europe, after your troublemaking in the Holy Land and being driven out across the hot, burning sands into the hills and cave sides of Europe, many of your fathers lost their lives in the desert. So every fraternal order in the West, Greek order, fraternity, masonry, shriners, elks, and whatnot, you all have to cross over some burning sands to remind you of where you came from. Where, no, where, not where you came from, where God brought you from. Because if it was left for you to come, you never would have arrived. The condition that you were in was so pitiful that the Bible said you were not even worthy to sit with the dogs of the flock of the righteous. Think over the book now. See, this is for arrogant people who think themselves self-sufficient. This is for uppity people who don't recognize that their origin is from dust. This is from proud, powerful men and women in government who can say yea or nay and the poor die. But there is a power that has power over the powerful. And he sets forth to them a parable. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. So we, in the spirit of a reminder, say to the Caucasians of America and the world, you did well to hide your history. But God has revealed it. So that we can know from whence you came. You didn't fall out of heaven with atomic energy. You didn't fall out of heaven as an astronaut that lost your ship. You just a humble earth dweller that created nothing <laughs> while you yourself were not created but made of the essence of that which is created. This is to humble you and make you to know that a powerful God and a powerful wisdom is now coming in to break up your wisdom and to make the wisdom of this world foolishness with God so that you who marvel in the wisdom of the Caucasian people you can stop it now because they were only given they were only given one book of mathematics a primer <laughs> And without mathematics, you can't build civilization. So if a man give you one book and there's 59,999 more, then no wonder you have death mixed with life in your science and technology. You're just a child. I cannot worship you in your youthfulness. 
because you refuse to submit to God who could grow you into a perfect knowledge of the things that you are seeking. But because you rebel against God, he cannot give you a perfect perception of reality, therefore you make mistakes. Serious errors. You are not mistake today. You just one big error. <laughs> and sometimes an error creates such a problem you can't fix it. You just have to erase it. <laughs> so God has come with the angels and a big eraser to erase the board of the problem and begin again. And that's why Jesus is called the second Adam because God is going to wipe it all out and begin again. And it depends on how we act, whether we are a part of the beginning or a part of the end. For all in Adam die. In the Quran, it asked the question, how long did they remain or tarry in the caves? For they did not know. And because they did not know how long they were in the cave, they said Allah knew. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, an unlearned man from among the despised and rejected and unlettered and unlearned black people of America stood up and said, you remained in the caves 2,000 years. That was a punishment put on the Caucasian people from God for troublemaking among the righteous. They were deprived of right guidance. They were deprived of everything except the language, and then they lost the language of the holy people. I can understand why the Jews want to get back to Palestine. They are like the moon that got split off from this part and lost her water to this part and is always trying to get back what she lost. So the Jews are always trying to go back to where they came from. So uh, Jesus in meeting with Nicodemus at night told Nicodemus, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven unless you are born again. How can I, a full grown man, enter back into my mother's womb for the second time? Jesus gave him a real shady kind of answer. So he would hear and not even understand what the, the wind bloweth from where it listeth not. <laughs> so Nicodemus went away at night just as dumb as when he came. <laughs> Entering back into your mother's womb means returning to the source of your origin, which is God and being made over again. You cannot, black people, see the new world as you are. You have been made by the old world, shaped in sin and iniquity. You cannot be a part of that which God makes new unless you are willing to undergo a process which is called being rebirthed. And it is a painful process because you're grown now and hardened in the way of evil. And this is why Jesus said, except you become as a little child, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven because you now need to be taught all over again. Because all that you have taught is unfit for the kingdom. Yeah. So this Caucasian that is now going into outer space. Discovering the depths of the ocean. Looking into the life germ and discovering its secrets. And trying to alter the characteristics in the nature of human beings. 
This same man just a few thousand years ago was on his all fours in the hills and cave sides of Europe. So teaches the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Holy Quran bears him witness. He was in the caves, didn't know how to bury his dead, didn't know how to cook food. This is the truth. In a movie that they made called Quest for Fire, they began to tell something of their origin. But if you don't know the truth, you will see it and miss it. He was telling you he had no language. He was grunting. That's where Tarzan came from. Yeah, it's true. The Caucasian was in that shape. Some of them grew little tails. This is true. And some of them today are born with little tails. I'm not telling a tale. I'm just telling the truth. This is not wisdom given to us that we make mockery of a people who are sitting on top of the world but it is given to you because you now are in a similar condition that they were in 4,000 years ago, only you're not in a physical cave, you're in a spiritual cave, and some of your homes look just like a cave. You hear me, uh, black brothers and sisters? So this is not given to give you something to make mockery of other people, but it is given to give you hope that if the white man could be in that condition and become the ruler of the entire planet, then there's hope for you if God said he will take the despised and the rejected and the bottom rail and bring it to the top. Then don't doubt that he can do it. If he did it for those yesterday, he can do it for you today. Dear beloved brothers and sisters, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that God commissioned Musa or Moses to go into the hills and cave sides of Europe to civilize the cave dwellers and get them on the road to conquest. This is why Moses is their great, great prophet. They love Moses, but not enough to follow him. They followed Moses just to get out of the condition of the caves. But after they were out, they went right on back to their evil doing. Because that was more compatible to their nature than the righteousness of the law that he had given them. Brothers and sisters, this is just plain truth. Again, the Quran is a witness. He finally, in the caves, made friends with the dog. And that is why today he tells you that the dog is man's best friend. How could a dog be my best friend and it barks and I talk? When I'm sad, the dog don't understand my pain. Only another human can understand my pain and comfort me. How could a dog be my best friend? unless I were a dog. Then as a dog, my best friend would be like myself, another dog. I wonder, is that what they're saying? If that's what you're saying, maybe that is right. That is correct. Because Moses tried to straighten the Caucasian up from walking on his all fours. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to us that Moses had to put a board in his back. And he made a corset for him. That's where you got it from, sisters. Because he was fat 
something sloppy and out of shape, particularly around in here, because he was walking on his all fours. Developed longer torso, longer arms, shorter legs, hair all over his body, like the lower animals. This comes from living in caves. 2,000 years in darkness, where their cave faced north. So the sun rose in the east and set in the west. They never saw it, never got no light in their cave. And the more they were in the cave, going further and further back, hair grew and grew over them till they looked akin to the animals. Yes, sir. They did not speak a language. No, sir. They grunted and the animal barked. So one grunted, <laughs> and the other barked, <laughs> but he thought that was kin. So he made a friend with the dog. So the Quran says, some say they were three, and the fourth of them, their dog. Three in a cave. Some say five, the sixth of them, their dog, making conjectures about the unseen. Others say seven, and the eighth of them, their dog, say my Lord knows best their number. But the dog was always present. always present. And today, in practically every home, there's a dog. And the dog gets more justice in America than the poor and the black, particularly the black. They'll stop on a highway and pick up a dog and run you over. They'll sit the dog down at their table and the dog will eat with them and lap out of their plate and then lick their face. But they will not sit in a restaurant and want you to live next door to them, but a dog can live with them. You think about that. Moses had a hard time with these people. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said Musa was a half original man, meaning he was part of both people, the black and the Caucasian. And where did he mix with the Caucasian? If they was in the caves of Europe. See, when we drove them out, we drove out all that we could find. There were some that were hidden and they grew up in the holy way of the holy people. And the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they began race mixing in the Holy Land. A half original man, Musa, he had to look something like them in order to attract them. He had to stay in a ring of fire because the only thing they feared was fire. Like the rest of the animals, you have to keep fire around you when you're dealing with savages. Because a savage don't know nothing about love. He just know it burns when you get in fire. <laughs> Poor Moses. But he did the job. He got them up. He had a hard task, but he got them up. He gave them a law that evolved them and made them to appear like the righteous so that they could go among the righteous and deceive them. And that they have done. Now why are you telling us this? There's so much more to it, but time won't permit us to take everything in detail. The rest of it you can get in the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's writings and message to the black man in America and some of his other writings. But let it be sufficient to say that the Bible teaches us in Deuteronomy that we should look for a man like Moses. The Holy Quran tells us the same thing, that the last man would be a man like Moses. He would do a work like Moses did. 
Yet in the Bible and in the Quran, you have a picture of a Moses going to Pharaoh, telling Pharaoh to let the people go. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said Moses lived 120 years. So he did a work in the west, in the caves, and he did a work in the east, or he said he could have. But, look at it, beloved. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad says that was a prototype or an antitypical picture of something that would come up in the last days of their world. All right. Now then, if we are to look for a man like Moses, which Moses? The Moses that went in the cave or the Moses that went to Pharaoh? The Moses that we should look for is a man that has both missions wrapped up in one. Because the people that he will go to will be enslaved, but it isn't that you have to cut off a chain. It is that their minds have been all but totally destroyed. You have to rebuild their minds. You have to rebuild their morals. You have to strengthen them and give them wisdom. That's a heck of a job. This people would be so destroyed under the power of a great and mighty king or ruler that they would be considered dead. The world has made several mistakes, particularly the theologians. I say theirs is a mistake because the theologians, many of them, sincerely want to find the answer to scripture. They thought that Jesus of 2,000 years ago was this one. And the Muslims think that Muhammad of Arabia 1400 years ago is that one. Beloved Muslims and Christians, I must tell you that both of you are mistaken. And even if it hurts your feeling, you are both mistaken. Jesus, according to the Holy Quran, in the 23rd surah and the 50th verse, it says Jesus and his mother were a sign. And we made the son of Mary and his mother a sign, and we gave them refuge on a lofty ground, having meadows and springs. If Jesus and his mother were a sign, a sign is pointing towards something greater than itself, but it itself is not the thing. Therefore, Jesus said one would come after him. Muhammad came, but Muhammad also prophesied that there would be one coming after him. Though the Muslims say it is the return of Jesus, it can't be the return of the man that died 2,000 years ago. Sorry about that, Muslims and Christians. You are a long way off in your spooked up misunderstanding of the scripture. And that's all right, you were supposed to be that way so that one could be raised from among the illiterates that would guide you into the knowledge that you have been stumbling over and seeking answers to. Dear beloved Christians and Muslims, Jesus said one was coming after him. He said, there are many things that I could tell you. You just can't bear it now. But when he, not me, he, he was not talking about himself. He was talking about someone other than himself. When he is come, the spirit of truth, he will guide you into all truth. That's heavy. So a man that could only 
leads you to a certain point and then heralds one who would take you all the way. He's telling you one is coming greater than me. You all don't want to believe this. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was made to say these words. Listen to me carefully now. Oh, I took it out of the 